keep that picture on my wall just to remind me how many boys and girls still need my help. Of course, there are fewer like that every year. I like to think about the many children I've helped and how much happier I've made them. As I sit here in my chair, oh, but you can't see me, can you? Let me make myself visible. There. I keep myself invisible most of the time. That way it's easier for me to help boys and girls learn good habits. Lots of times they don't even know I'm helping them. Let me tell you about one boy I've been helping. His name is Stanley. I use my magic wand to take you to him. Ready? Let's go! I'd already helped Stanley a lot. He had many good habits. He washed his face at least twice a day and his hands four or five times a day. He did it every day without having to think about it because it was a habit. There was one habit Stanley hadn't learned yet. He didn't clean his fingernails when he washed his hands. And goodness, how dirty they were. So I decided to use my magic. I said, Stanley, dirty nails carry germs, and they look ugly, too. You go right back and brush them. Stanley learned that a good scrubbing with a stiff fingernail brush every morning and night at least, made his nails clean and neat. He learned to dry his hands carefully, especially around the fingernails. Once he learned these good habits, no one ever scolded him for dirty nail again. Washing his hair every week is another good habit I helped Stanley learn. I taught him to start by washing his comb and brush each time he washes his hair. There are always hairs in a hairbrush. I'll tell you why in a moment. After they're out, he washes his comb and brush in soapy water and then rinses every bit of soap out. He washes his hair under the shower. Warm water, a mild soap or shampoo, and plenty of gentle rubbing is all it takes. He rubs with his fingertips, not his fingernails, so that he doesn't hurt the tender skin under the hair. When he rinses out this thing, his hair is fairly clean, but not quite clean enough. Under soaping will really do job. And plenty of rinse. Now those are some of the good habits I helped Stan learn. Now I promise to tell you why there are always hairs in a hairbrush. Suppose you had magic eyes. And when you looked in the mirror, you could see closer and closer and closer. And suppose you could see right through your skin and see the root that a hair grows from. If your magic eyes could speed up the growing, you'd see that the new growth always comes at the root. As the hair gets longer and longer, it will finally come loose from the root. A new hair starts to grow and pushes against the old one. Brushing pulls out the old hair and leaves more room for the new one. If your magic eyes look closer, they'd see little sound each hair. These sacks make which protects your skin and hair from getting too to spread this oil all over your hair and makes it glossy and pretty. When this oil gets dirty, Soap is used to it so it can be washed away, but every bit of the soap must be rinsed out afterwards, since any soap that's left will leave a dull film over your hair and keep it from dirty again. 
The nail grows from a root, too, under the fold of skin at the base. The edge of the cuticle. Sometimes a bit of the skin and forms a hangnail. As the nail grows, it should be trimmed to just cover your fingertip. Now your hair can get sick. If you notice anything, be sure to tell your parents or teacher about it right away. It may be a disease called ringworm. It makes your head itch. Sometimes the hair falls out in patches. A doctor can help cure this disease. Another disease is dandruff. Or you may find that instead of these thin, flat flakes, you have little white specks that look like tiny eggs. And that's just what they are. They're called nits, and they're the eggs of head lice. They're easy to get rid of. So tell your parents or teacher about them right away. Anyone might get a disease. The best safeguard is to keep yourself clean. Don't use anybody's comb but your own. And don't wear anyone else's hat. Now, keeping clean is only part of caring for your hair and nails. Let me tell you about somebody else I've helped. Her name is Alice. I use my magic wand again. Ready? Let's go! She certainly needed to learn some good habits in caring for her hair. So I used my magic. I said, Alice, you go right back and brush your hair till it shines. So I helped her learn the habit of brushing her hair every night, a hundred strokes or more. That sounds like a lot, doesn't it? But it's worth taking the time for. It makes hair gleam and glisten. But even more important, it makes hair healthier, too. So it's just as important for boys as it is for girls. I've helped many boys and girls learn that habit. Alice learned to take care of her nails, too. She files them to keep them from getting too long and to give them a pretty shape. But she's careful not to get them too short. She makes her nails pretty, too, by pushing the cuticle off the nail. She does it with a soft piece of wood called an orange stick. Soft wood won't cut her skin the way sharp metal might. A cuticle oil softens the cuticle makes it easier to push back. Oh, here's a hangnail. Hangnails are really nails. They're pieces of skin that start to pull away from the nail. Drying your fingers well helps prevent hangnails. I helped Alice learn the habit of cutting them off with the scissors instead of pulling my take off too much. Feel good to think about Alice. And all the girls help to learn good habits. Once you've learned a good habit, it'll work for you all your life. Such little things as brushing your nails clean when you wash your hands. Hair every week, or oftener if it needs it. Brushing your hair at strokes every day, whether you're a boy or a girl. And keeping your nails trimmed. Not too long and not too short. Those are some good habits that many boys and girls have already learned. But there are still some who need my help. Mm -hmm.